Good afternoon, this is Between the Lines live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerhold, Managing Editor of the Register, and my guest today is Wendy Patton from Policy Matters Ohio, a nonprofit, nonpartisan research institute with the mission of contributing to a more prosperous, equitable, inclusive, and sustainable Ohio. Wendy Patton is going to be talking about the uh, American Healthcare Act that's winding its way through the Senate. Uh, after the House uh, passed a, the bill earlier this year. She's going to talk about what it will mean and what it looks like right now and what it could like, look like in the future and what kind of impact it might have in the state of Ohio. Uh, before I introduce Wendy, I want to mention that next week we have Chuck Hofert, a Register Sunday columnist on Between the Lines. Chuck Hofert will be here Wednesday. I believe that's at noon. And all of our Between the Lines programs are available at www.snuskyregister.com slash BTL. Aaron McLaughlin's with us here today, producing this segment of Between the Lines. Aaron, do you want to say hello? All right. <laughs> and I think with that, oh, I do need to mention that Between the Lines Live is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors for Erie County residents age 60 and better. When you need help, call Serving Our Seniors, 419-624-1856. And with that, I'll introduce Wendy Patton uh, from Policy Matters Ohio. Thank you for being back with us. Thank you so much. I, I found you were here a couple months ago, uh, and you know I think it was really, what you had to say was really important. You, you brought some clarity to confusion. And I think, you know, healthcare, who knew it could be so complicated? Who yes. knew <laughs> it could be so complicated? It's complicated. But you're particularly concerned with the, the Senate version of the American Health Care Act, which is being uh, developed right now in the U.S. Senate. And what, what makes you concerned about it? I'm concerned about it because we think that it's going to look a lot like what came out of the House. We heard this week from Senator John Cornyn of Texas, who is a leader in this initiative, that it would look 80% like what the House bill looked like. And the House bill didn't look very good for Americans of low and modest income and for Ohio. So we're concerned. It looks good, it looks good for wealthy Americans, though. A lot. Is that true, or am that, I overstating that? I think that's true. We know that from the Congressional Budget Office score that the federal government plans on saving $834 billion over the next 10 years just out of the changes that they'll make to Medicaid and then another $300 billion from the changes to the, um, to the insurance markets. Most of that money, go, the majority of that money goes back in tax cuts to wealthy Americans to pharmaceutical companies and to insurance companies. So it really is, we're trading off health care for tax cuts. And because the Affordable, the, the Affordable Care Act, ACA, also known as Obamacare, instituted specific taxes on wealthy people to help pay the cost of insurance for low-income people. That's correct. Uh, basically developing the, the, the method to help them pay for health insurance. That's correct. The, um, the funding was partially from an in, increased taxes to support the Medicare fund and on um, very, um, uh, what they call deluxe health plans. These tended to fall on uh, families with income greater than 200000 a year. Of course, in Ohio, the median household income is less than 50000 okay. a year. So this was upper income uh, people, and that, that's where many of the tax cuts will come. However, the wealthier you are, the more the tax cut comes to you. So it's right. estimated that half of all of the tax cuts in the uh, of American Health Care Act would accrue to the top 1.5 percent, you know, the wealthiest of the wealthy so in this America. Is, this is the same, uh, you know, cut taxes for the wealthy at the cost of lower income people. At the cost of lower income people, health, productivity, security, and at the cost of jobs, jobs. across America and especially across Ohio, 
where the health care sector has been a bright employment sector in a pretty dim mm -hmm. picture. So what you're saying is, is if the, the new bill, the, if the American Health Care Act, is approved similar to what the House approved, if the House and the Senate come together to, to enact this plan, that it will result in the loss of health care jobs because there's going to be that much less money in the health care field. Yes, that's exactly right. The um, $834 billion that Congress saves and gives back in tax cuts will come out of state grants that support insurance services for people across Ohio. In Ohio, for example, Medicaid insurance is our largest single insurer, mm -hmm. covering mm -hmm. more than three million people. Um, uh, about one, uh, more than a million of those are kids alone. That's what's going to be squeezed. And as it's squeezed, as the money is squeezed out of Ohio, there will be less going to the providers and the hospitals and the healthcare jobs that have grown robustly, especially in rural counties. So this is in the Senate right now. The House approved it in the spring, a couple months ago. Yes. Now, President Trump recently said the House bill was mean. Uh, he, he, he was quoted as saying the House bill was mean, and he was hoping the Senate would come up with a different plan. Did you, are you aware of that? Yes, I had heard that. I don't know what to say it's a about confusing. Especially given that President Trump's budget for 2018 would take an additional $600 billion over 10 years. On top of that, $834 billion. When we're talking mean, he's getting a little bit meaner than the House got. Um, we, we do see the Senate talking about ways to help around the edges. Um, Senator Portman of Ohio is very concerned, as he should be, about the opioid epidemic mm -hmm. in Ohio. Mm -hmm. We lost more than 4,000 people in this epidemic, and it is a public health mm -hmm. epidemic. Um, Medicaid expansion has been the backbone of treatment here That's in Ohio. Right. Mm -hmm. So the American Health Care Act would phase out the Medicaid expansion. Um, Senator Portman has suggested taking a little bit longer, but that really is not a meaningful move. It still means that it ends. And the 700,000 people, uh, uh, the majority of whom are men, the majority of whom are white men, who did not have the, um, the income before for health care, these are, these are people working. 43% uh, are working, and another 40% are looking for work. They are our low-wage workers. They are working in janitorial, customer service, retail, fast food. This is a very turbulent market with a lot of turnover. So this is a working population. And they're going to lose insurance? They would lose insurance, whether it's phased out quickly or slowly, they would lose insurance. Senator Portman has proposed a longer phase out. We, everybody still loses by 2027. So Obamacare, with the problems that exist with Obamacare, did create insurance opportunities for about 28 million people across the country. Yes. And it's estimated that this replacement or repeal replacement of Obamacare would wipe out m most of that. That's, that's right. I think it's important to understand also that the non- um, the non-group market, the federal exchange that operates here in Ohio and provides insurance benefits to people, is a very small component of the insured market. It's about 5% in Ohio. The, the Medicaid market, by, by com comparison, is huge. It's 25%. It's our largest insurer. Um, and this is true in your neck of the mm -hmm. woods, for example, in Sandusky County. Our neighboring county. Our neighboring county, about 22% of the population relies on Medicaid for their health coverage. So um, we understand that there are problems in the non-group market on the exchange. Um, there's, it's not affordable enough. It needs to mm -hmm. be made more affordable. Um, but this is a small component of the market. And what we wish that the Senate was focused on fixing that problem. Well, There's it's a problem in, it's in, in that the market. Senate right now, and I'm sure Senator Susan Collins is in the room, uh, Republican from Maine. I'm, I'm sure she's in the room. I hope she's in the room. Uh, it's been reported that 13 men are in the room. I hope so, that Senator Collins and uh, Senator Murkowski I, 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 are I, forcing I, their way in. Or forcing their way in, because they're, they're going to have to kick the door down. 
Well, they need to do that. They, they, they need to do that. They're important voices. Then, then I heard uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren on uh, CBS this morning talk about that there's 13 Republican males in the Senate behind closed doors devising this, uh, this uh, bringing the House bill and the Senate bill together, uh, and there's no women in there. That's a problem. Plus well, why, why, why wrong. would you need women? In, why, I mean, it, it, are, are women covered by health insurance? I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, this is, this is just, I mean, to think about this is, you know, why would they do this? Why is it so important? Isn't it poli politically, isn't it politically a, a, a suicide mission that they're on? I, is it? Well, I think that people need to understand that women have a lot of at stake here with the changes that are being debated, and not everybody understands maternity benefits as a human insurance need instead of a female insurance need. We all have mothers, most of us have sisters, many of us have wives, you know, so um, we but, but can to, lose to, some essential benefits. To exclude benefits. the female senators, uh, and Susan Collins is who I think of because she's a Republican, uh, but Dianne Feinstein, uh, Elizabeth yes. Warren, they're, they're excluded from, at least that's what they claim, they're being excluded, and I believe them. Uh, but what you said, they have to kick the door down. Well, I, I said it, you said they have to get in there, and I said they need to kick the door down. Yeah. But I guess my question is, is, is this, is it politically viable for Senate Republicans and House Republicans to force this onto the American people? Is it viable? Can they do it? Are they going to be able to do it? We understand that polling is showing that what is proposed, what came out of the House, is very unpopular with the Americans. We know what Americans want fixed, and it's uh, the affordability in the insurance market, mm -hmm. which is small. If they would focus on that small problem and not go about dismantling Medicaid, which is so important to so many of our families, then they would be focusing on a genu genuine fix that the American people could get behind. However, they've gone so much further than that, and they're going to hurt so many of us, 23 million Americans, um, in Ohio, we have three million on Medicaid who are threatened in the long run, and um, you know, 700,000 on Medicaid expansion, 200,000 in the federal exchange markets. That's far too many people to be worried about what's going on in Congress. They should be focusing on where there's a problem and fixing it with a diverse set of senators in the room. And do you think there's any possibility that will happen? Are you predicting, or does your research show or is it your understanding that the Senate is likely going to approve a bill that looks a lot like what the House approved earlier this year? What I can tell you is that what is under consideration at this point, according to one of their leaders, Senator John Cornyn, mm -hmm. is 80% the same as the House bill. 80% 80, 80 the Will same. Will it change? We've seen this under debate since um, the Congress has um, come into session. We have not seen significant deviation from it, um, so we're fearful. We would like to see a change in direction, but we have not seen any change in direction that would focus on the problem and leave Medicaid alone. And were you surprised earlier this year when the American Health Care Act was approved by the House? Did you expect that to happen? Because it seemed that there was no resolution here. You had the the Freedom Caucus on the far right of the Republican Party, and then I forget what the uh, moderates are called on the, in the moderate area of the Republican Party. There was no resolution between them. They both wanted different things, and then suddenly they were celebrating this victory in the House. Were you surprised by that victory? Frankly, I wasn't. This victory that they celebrated had been um, rehearsed mm -hmm. a year earlier. Mm -hmm. We have seen calls for the changes to the Affordable Care Act for the last five years or longer. Um, it's well rehearsed. I think what we're seeing is the Republican Party who is in charge in both houses of Congress and the presidency, it's learning to negotiate within itself. Within itself. So we aren't seeing people like um, Senator Murkowski of Alaska and Senator Collins of Maine being backed by enough people that they have a coalition that's able to draw um, a group more towards what they're interested in, which is expanded coverage and greater affordability. So as this um, process 
unfolds, I find it very discouraging that instead of bringing Senator Collins and Senator Bukowski into the room, mm -hmm. they are excluded from it. And that makes mm -hmm. me, that, that doesn't fill me with optimism. So what would, what would someone who disagrees with you, what, what, what would be their argument? I mean, I'm trying to understand the argument that, that can be made that a, a bill that takes insurance away from up to 23 million people, the potential, of 23 million, how can you argue that that's a good thing? I mean, I, I mean, how do they do it? Do you know I, what the argument is? I don't know. The argument is that they were married to repealing the Affordable Care Act before they became a majority. And I'm not, it's not clear to me what the other underpinnings are. You know, for one thing, we hear over and over again that the insurance markets are imploding. And yet we saw Anthem pull out of 18 counties in Ohio this year after reporting that the market was stabilizing on the federal exchanges. When President Trump, who repeatedly threatens not to make payments guaranteed under the Affordable Care Act, sort of rattles the cage of the insurance companies, they have a fiduciary responsibility. Anthem said, okay, he just did it again. He said he's not gonna pay in June we're going to have to cut some markets loose. This is not a sign of an insurance market imploding. It's a sign of uncertainty um, in Washington that's leading to business decisions that don't work it's, well it's, for people. It's lighting the fuse. It's lighting the it's fuse. lighting the fuse. And so no one can argue that the, there are 18 counties in Ohio where more than 10,000 families are very worried very stressed by possible loss of their health insurance la next year. That is not something our elected officials should be imposing on our Ohio families. And we're, we're going to invite uh, Representative Jim Jordan to be a guest on Between the Lines again. He's been here in the past, and we're going to invite him to be here again to help us understand this from his perspective. Yes. Honestly, it, it, to me, and, you know, this is just me, um, it seems to me that the Republican Party is, it wants to keep its promise to repeal Obamacare um, at all costs. And that would be the 23 million that could possibly lose the insurance. They want to keep their promise to cut taxes to the wealthy. I, I just don't understand it. So we will ask Representative Jim Jordan to come back here on Between the Lines, help us understand that this better from his perspective. Uh, what else can you tell us? One thing that I'm particularly, I have a lot of concerns about this bill. I'm mm -hmm. concerned about what it's going to do to seniors. And I see that one of the sponsors for Between the Lines is a senior service. Yes. Um, the AARP call, calls the configurations of tax credits on the exchange for um, people between 50 and, and 65 an age tax because of changes in the bill that greatly drive up costs um, particularly for lower income seniors. For example, it's been calculated that for a 60-year-old earning 20000 a year in Ohio, on average, they could expect to see their health care costs go up by more than $8,000 a year under this plan. There's, a, there's been a complete restructuring of the credits and of what uh, insurers are allowed to cover, it falls the most heavily on seniors. So, so you might be able to retire at 65, you just won't be able to pay your health insurance. Well, you might be able to retire at 62, but you can't pay. At 65, you can get Medicare, okay. and that's a good thing. But between 55 and, and 65, Many people are eligible for retirement. Right, but they can't. They will, it will be much, much more difficult for them to retire because of the increased cost do, of do health care. Do you think there's any chance that someone on the, the right, the Republican Party on the right, they're going to say, well, let's, let's, let's slow down here. This is, this is political suicide. Because is it political suicide from your position? I don't know if you, you look at it that way, but is it... We, look, we don't look at it that way. We look at it as the wrong thing to do, as mm -hmm. being harmful to helping people be as productive and self-sufficient as they can be. So what would policy matters tell people to do? Who Should they write their congressmen, that call their congressmen? Yes. And, and express their concern over the Senate's version of the American, yeah. Afford, American Health Care Act? 
I, we if they think do that on purpose, make it sound the same, because I get them mixed up. Affordable health care, uh, Affordable Care Act was Obamacare, and now we're talking about American Health Care Act. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'll tell you, I think that everyone should call their elected officials. I think our elected officials really care about what their constituents have to say. And we think that what the American people want from the polling data we see, people want improved access to health care. They want, they feel that, many feel that the health care is too expensive and they want affordable health care and they want to ensure security. If you have a pre-existing condition, you need to get health care you can afford to pay. You should not have to pay more for mental health care or for maternity benefits. So Unless you're a woman. Do you have a mother? <laughs> Do you have a wife? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, it just seems to me to be just being blind politically that you're you fit first off you're ignoring women almost entirely yeah you're, you're locking them out of the room um, and they're they're more than 50 percent of the consumers of health care benefits uh, or health care they're more than 50 percent of the population and you're just basically saying we're going to tell you what to do uh, and how to do it um, but we, again, we'll ask uh, Representative Jim Jordan. He's uh, with the Freedom Caucus in the U.S. Congress, a representative from Norwalk, or the 4th District, which includes Norwalk. We'll ask him to be on Between the Lines and help us understand this better from his perspective. Is there anything else that, that we should know? I, 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 I had another question, and it just, it just slipped my mind. Well, while you're pulling that one yes. up, I'm going to repeat to our viewers, thank you for watching. And we encourage you to call your elected official and say, I want you to commit to a health care bill that doesn't decrease my access to insurance. I want you to commit that you won't pass a bill that increases my cost so that I can't afford it. And I want you to ensure that my insurance gives me security that I will get the insurance benefits I need for my health coverage. So ask them to commit to those three things. On, on that note, I, I want to thank you for, for coming back to Between the Lines. I want to invite you again anytime you. you feel it necessary because you bring clarity to this. You bring more clarity to this than I've had, and I really appreciate it. And I think our viewers appreciate it. And we'll have a story in tomorrow's or this weekend's registers about more on this from your perspective and from other perspectives where we can find it. Wendy Patton from Policy Matters Ohio, thank you very much for being on Between the Lines. Thank you so much. Good to see you again. Good seeing you. That's it for this edition of Between the Lines Live. It's industryregister.com. Thank you for being with us.